Holy Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you how you brought us this far, giving us life, health, and strength. Praise you for your goodness. Thank you for keeping us all week long to enter once again together and call on your name. The song says there's none like you, none like Jesus in anyway. We call on you for all that we need. We call on you for all that we want. We call on you for others, whether they be homeless, sick, afflicted in war zones, earth tragedies. We call on you for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Ask you to touch our politicians in this country. Help them, oh God. Help them. Need to make the right decision for the people of this world. Be with them. Be by their side. Those who are doing the right thing, we ask you to bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Touch our city, our young black men in this city. Lord Jesus, the killings, the shootings, the robberies. Lord, touch right now. Bind Satan in the name of Jesus. We blind him in Jesus' name we pray. Now, Lord, bless the word that you've given out to us. Help us that, that we can portray it the way you gave it to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Can we say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. We thank God for another day. What's the song? Is it another day for Jesus? And I'm so glad. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. My, my neighbor told me the other day, I'm glad I, I'm glad I could do this. I'm just happy that God has given me the ability to get up in the morning. Have my, as, as Mother Thomas used to say, have my hearing and my eyesight. Yes, yes. My limbs to walk. Yes. So I said, none like Jesus. Yes. None like him. Oh, he's so good to me, isn't he? Second Corinthians. The fourth chapter. fourth chapter and we're going to start at what do I have up there brother? The first verse. Therefore since through God's mercy we have this ministry we do not lose heart. Rather we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor we do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of their believers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ who is in the image of God. For what we preach is not of ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let let light shine out of darkness, made this light shine of our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay, to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus might also be revealed in our body. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word of his word. You may be seated. Sometimes I have to read my notes a whole lot of times because I have to always ask God to give me understanding (laughs) what he gave me. Because sometimes he'll give you something. You say, what did he say? What did he give me that for? So you have to pray for understanding, even yeah. when you, uh, you, you, you no, no, long, no matter how long we've been preaching, some of us, some of us for a long, long time. <laughs> it's 
just not age thing, but it there. <laughs> but some of them for a real long time. And uh, you always have to ask God, you know, no matter how long you be preaching, why did you tell me that? But, you know, God knows what he's telling you to tell his people. You may not always understand it, but uh, uh, if you give it the way God gave it to you, then you're all right. I, 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 I watch a lot. I don't watch a lot of them. Every now and then I'll watch a TV preacher or something. And a lot of them get up with an antidote. And, and I don't have antidotes. I don't have, I'm not a person who have to enjoy. But I was thinking that, uh, 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 and it's been on my mind all week long, why, why it happened that way. Uh, some years ago, as we say all the time, I was in the Army. And uh, before the Army, I was in college, and I, and I was a track runner. And ran with some, you know, back in those days, I was fast. <laughs> Jesus, help me. But, uh, but I was in my mess hall. I was a mess sergeant. And I had about 200 chickens that had to be quartered. And anybody who ever pulled KP and ever been in a mess hall, you know, we had those knives. Not the, not, not, not the meat cleaver, big, big butcher knives. And I, uh, I was sitting up there and I'm, bam, boom, bam. And I had, we had this one sergeant, that was a mean man. It's been a couple of tours in now, Vietnam. And he was mean. He was just, he had Brother Malachi. He's the kind of guy when you came in the army, if he said something to you, was automatically start shivering. A lot of the little, you know, I had been in there a while at that time. But yeah, they, they start shivering. And, and he was just mean. And he had, he had, a, he had a look and, and he didn't, didn't like black folk. He let you know. He, he walked in my mess hall and he walked up to me and face to face, I don't like you. And when you get off the ship, I got something I'm going to give you. Wow. And I looked at him and said, yeah? He said, yeah, he said, it's going to be me and you. Now, I, I'm, not, I'm not a fighter. I said, <laughs> you know, I'm kind of, I'm not big and muscly. This is a big, mean man. But you know, I, you know, there's none that like Jesus. Yeah. All I could say was yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Because I know what he had did to other folk. And uh, uh, so I'm, I'm just, I mean, my duty is to chop those chickens up. So I'm chopping chickens with big back. And all of a sudden I heard somebody say, attention. And I looked around, the, the, a full bird colonel walked in the mess hall. And he was over there, and you know, you got to, when they say that, you better, you know, you jump. You know, full bird colonel. And, and, he saluted the colonel and, and he said, what can I do for the colonel? And he's, you know, as, as you say, kissing up back in the day. <laughs> he just, colonel said, get out of my face. He said, Spencer's king, get you a cup of coffee. Come on and sit down. All right. <laughs> Talk to me. And I look it up. I, I forgot he knew that he ran with Jesse Owens. Mm -hmm. And I ran with Jimmy Hines. And uh, so we both knew Olympic champions. Right. And, uh, uh, but but it, 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 it came to my mind this week. I said, you know, God had, what, what, what did he say? has a ram in the bush? Yeah. Uh, you know, because I, I, I was not too anxious to get off shift that day. <laughs> <laughs> but God do nothing that I, I did. But it brought that ram in the bush in. Right. And, and, and I've been thinking about that all week, and I just say, well, maybe I'll tell that to somebody, yeah. let you know that God's got something God's to protect it. your back. Yeah. Yeah. No matter where you get. Now, I'm on these kind of people. I don't go to these stores. And I'll be honest with you. I, I'm, if, if Sister Felicia don't have to go to East Oakland, I don't go to East Oakland. I do not like to go to East Oakland. But y'all who live out in East Oakland, God got something to protect your back. Yes, he does. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. God is any good saint. Every Christian getting the maximum yield from your field. 
the maximum yield for your field. Yes, right. Every Christian has a field of mission, right. ministry. Whatever you do, and wherever you go during the week, whatever job you have, whatever you put your hands to do, is your field yes. of ministry. God wants you to get the maximum yes. yield from those fields. Now, and see, 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 a saint of God don't have a designated field. Yeah. You, I could walk right over your field and your, my, your field is my field all of a sudden. Did that make sense? Spiritually, now we talk, yeah. now I see, see. Uh, 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 when I lived with my grandmother down on the farm, Mr. Mutterspotter's farm was his farm. Mm -hmm. And he had a fence up there and don't go on his farm. Mm -hmm. And don't come on our farm right. with what you had to do. But when you, when you love the Lord, when you, when, when you, you see, 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 this is, this is like the staging place here. When you walk out that door, if we stand side by side, I feel my field and your field is the same field. Right, right. So, but God wants you to maximize that field. Right, right. This passage offers kind of three, like three principles. Uh, the first one, the first principle that I came up with here is protect God's word. Protect God's word. In this passage, Paul returns to the theme of being minister of the new covenant. He writes, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, we have received mercy. We faint not. Ministry is a privilege. And as believers, we all have a ministry, not because we deserve it, but as a result of the mercy of God, yes. we should not faint mm -hmm. or give up. Yes. So, what is the key to defeating discouragement? Galatians 6 and 9 says, let us not become weary in well-doing. Yes. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest yes. Yes. if we don't give up. Yes. Paul continues and he says, we let us know that we renounce the hidden things of dishonesty, mm -hmm. not walking in craftiness, mm -hmm. defeating discouragement, includes renouncing all personal sins and that kind of corruption. Mm -hmm. Paul discusses false teachers and preachers who corrupt the word of God. They preach only to fleece the sheep. And uh, it's, it's unfortunate, it's unfortunate. Uh, I, I, I read a, I looked at a video Sister Tiffany sent. Someone walking up and down the street asking, do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe? You know, so many have stood in places like this and deceived men to the point they don't want to believe in Jesus. Yeah, back in the day, well, I, uh, uh, you can't do with the stuff I use. That y'all remember that preacher? Mm -hmm. I don't like to call, call too many names, but uh, you can't lose with the stuff I use. And there, there, there are preachers that 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 use that to draw people in, and people come in. Uh, Dad used to talk about a preacher back in I think it's back in uh, uh, Jasper, Texas. Got on the radio and said, "Now, everybody." If you want a real blessing for, from get a silver dollar, put it in the cup, and bring it out, and set it on the altar. I don't know, man, how many hundreds of dollars he got that day. He got a whole lot of money because people believed in uh, uh, what he said. You're going to get a blessing. You got to pay for your blessing. Dad, you say, I, I'm not paying you for my. I'm not paying for a blessing. He said, I'm asking God for a blessing, and He'll give it to me. Oh, well, give me some, save me, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Instead of straightforward preaching of God's word, deceit yeah, yeah. in this spot, tricks and stories to twist God's word. They handle the word of God deceitfully to teach false doctrine and extort finances. Look how does 2 Timothy 
4 and 3 describe this speakable times. For the time will come, Timothy said, when people will not put up with sound doctrine, instead suit to their own desire, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. People just want to hear, they don't want to hear Jesus died on the cross to save your sins. Jesus is, is, Jesus is here to, to heal your body. Jesus is here to, to, to take care of your family. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear them say, oh, put a silver dollar in the cup and God's going to bless you. Yeah. But see, see, we have a primary job of saving souls. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. 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 it seems like somewhere along the line, yeah. people have forgotten that you have to die and meet Jesus somewhere down the line. Isn't it that tomorrow's not promised. We say it all the time. We say tomorrow's not promised. And, 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 and we used to say back in a long time ago, it, if, you, if you live to be 100 years old, eternity is longer than 100 years old. You got, to, you, got to, you got to be in eternity a lot longer than you live here. So you might as well live 100 years right so you can have eternity with Jesus Christ. But people don't want to believe that much anymore. Sometimes I wonder why God gave me stuff. Am, is it, am I doing all right? Yeah. I'm trying. All right. The second thing you want to talk about is perceive the spiritual veil. Apparently Paul had been accused of preaching vague and obscurity message. Therefore he writes, but if our gospel be hid, it is here to them that are lost. Yeah. Yeah. Many people, especially the Jews of that day, Paul uh, uh, could not, they couldn't accept this, this gospel coming from Paul. They were scared of Paul, number one. And sometimes, uh, uh, yeah, uh, 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 there was one preacher I used to be kind of scared of, little Bishop Walton. Yeah. Bishop Walton, Bishop Walton, I love Bishop Walton. Bishop Walton believed in a whole lot of stuff. Uh, that the Bible, the Bible said it, that's what it was. Yeah. And, and Bishop Walton would catch you at the bus station downtown. The Bible said, greet you with a holy kiss. You got a kiss. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. And, and, and let's be real. Uh, 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 I was in, um, I believe it was Nigeria. And uh, uh, they greeted you with a kiss. But if you notice, if you watch the TV, now, it don't mean that you got the, it don't, it ain't saying that. It ain't saying. If you notice it in, in the Middle East, they kiss you on either side of the cheek. Yeah. And, and, and I saw a lot of that when I was in, the middle, in, in Nigeria and, and also Ghana. They kiss you, they just said, how you doing, brother? Mm -hmm. and that, but the Bible said, make it holy. Yeah. So, so I, <laughs> Bishop Walton, I, you know, he was a preacher, he, he preached. He preached, if, 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 when he preached, you felt, you remember, Jesus is coming in five seconds from now. And you better be right. That's right. He, he, he was, but before I be, was able to really understand, I was scared when Bishop Walton preached. And when he walked up on you, he, he, see, I was a little guy. And I go like this, he was about six something. But Paul explains that God, the God of this world, blinds the minds of the unbelievers. Wow. Blinds the minds of the other people. The scripture in 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, A person without spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit. So, and, and, and if you don't have the spirit, if, you, if you're not rooted in the spirit of God, your mind is blinded to what the God is saying. Huh. Yeah. I love Jesus, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So Paul explains that. The world blind. The, the devil is a saint. The Bible lets us know he's a prince of the air. Yeah. And, 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 and dad used to always say, uh, uh, that's why you hear so much mess over the radio back then we have too many TVs. But he, uh, he, he, what, what came over the radio and, and all kinds of stuff would come over the radio and, they, and we couldn't listen to you, the only time we listened to the radio, it was either to listen to 
a, 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 a radio story at night or Sunday morning KDIA gospel. Yeah. Some of y'all remember that, don't you? <laughs> God bless you. But that's what we that's what we had. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, 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 uh, a whole lot of the, he said the, Satan is the prince of the air and, yeah. and the radio goes all through the air you can talk right now every one of us just about got something in our pocket and you can talk to you I could talk to I talk to friends in Europe in real time right. in real time and, and you want to know some, some whole lot of stuff go on in real time through the air in your pocket oh say me Jesus does that make sense? Yeah, a whole lot of stuff goes. See, I haven't, the pastor reaches the mountaintop before I do sometimes. I, can't, I haven't got to the mountaintop. I, I didn't mean I'd be on the mountaintop, sir. I just got to give you. The prince of the air is trying, he, 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 he's working overtime, overtime to make sure that people hear what they don't need to hear. Even on your TV now, there are people with something, even the devil, some, some of these folks who are not even that spiritual got good sense enough to put a little button on your TV so your kids can't look at everything that they want to look at. And it's very unfortunate that, see, it, 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 it'll work when you have a family plan on cell phones because a parent can do it. But see, these kids, they're smart. They go down to the metro and get their old phone. <laughs> yeah. They get their old phone and they get a cheap phone and they listen to everything they want to hear on the cheap phone and you don't even know they have it. Yeah. Unless it accidentally ring, but they keep it on silent. Oh, see, I worked in a high school. I mean, no one. <laughs> they, they, now, let me tell you something. When your kids walk out of your house yeah, yeah. and when they, yes, mother, I'll see you later, mother. When they walk out the house, they didn't know more. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. Allison Dean, my sister, CC, back in those days, your dress better be down here. And y'all know, some women here, they used to roll them bad boys up. <laughs> my, like a few blocks from the house, they roll them up, and they, just like everybody else had, had it right here, there's it right there. And when they got out of school, they rolled it back down. You see, so 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 you don't know always what they're doing. Devil's the prince of the air. My Lord. Huh. I'm getting there. Men in this world choose to make Satan their God because they live like he wants them to live. Satan's goal is to spiritually muddle the minds and the, and the hearts of people so they don't see the truth in the gospel. But how, people are accountable they, 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 for their own decision. And then, let me tell you something. I refer to this movie from time to time, Kingdom of Heaven. And, and the young man, he, he, he went to talk to the king. Uh, at that time, it was, uh, it was when they had conquered the Muslims in Jerusalem, he went to talk to the king and, and, and the king in his conversation told him, he says, now, if I told you to go out and do some stuff and, and hurt Brother Malachi, hurt Sister Lil, hurt somebody else, he says, now, if I told you to go out there and do it, he said, but when you see God, you can't go to God and say, well, the king told me to do it. He said, you are accountable for yourself. And later on in the movie, when he told him, he says, now I want you to do this, this, this. He said, what about that man over there? He said, we're going to kill him. He says, he said, I can't go with that. He said, because you told me that I'm accountable for that. Just because you told me to do it, right. don't mean that it's on you. Yeah. He said, I'm accountable for that. Right. He said, so no. We are accountable for what we do. That's right. That's right. No matter who tell you to do wrong, no matter how Satan comes in and tell you to do wrong, you are accountable because there's one thing you can say. 
Yes or no. One of the two. You can do or don't do. Can we say praise the Lord? Satan wants to prevent people from understanding Jesus Christ is in the image of God. Proceed the spiritual veil now. Jesus accurately represents the invisible God. Jesus told Philip that he has seen me, has seen the Father. Yeah. If you see me, I often refer to Pastor when he was a little bitty guy. And Dad introduced him to some preacher friends of him. And the preacher said, yeah, buddy, you can't deny that one. <laughs> <laughs> you can't deny it. You gotta have, when you see Steve, you see, you see Dad. Because he, he looked just like him. They act like him half the time. Oh, praise the Lord, Savior, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus let him know when you see me, you see the Father. Yes, yes. How I act is how the Father act. I yes. talk to him, he talks to me. Yes. I came from the Father. Yes. So, many people reject the gospel because they refuse to believe that Jesus is God's son yes. in flesh and blood. They also refuse to believe Paul's preaching and teaching that, the, that is recorded in the Bible. Paul writes this, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. Paul didn't go around preaching about himself. He didn't talk about, you know, he didn't say, Hey, look, man, I, I never forget. We used to, uh, the pulpit was right here, up top behind me. And this preacher, he must have just got that ring. Big old diamond, looked like gold. And, and, and he kept preaching, and he kept doing this. <laughs> uh, and he preaching all he could preach, and he kept on doing it. And that, that diamond was just good. <laughs> and, and, Jesus is who we preach about. It ain't about you. It's about Christ. <laughs> oh, save me, Jesus. I, what I'm trying to say, Paul is letting them know, uh, I'm going to preach about the Lord and what the Lord did not only for me, but what he'll do for you. Yes, yes. That's what I want to preach about. Yes, yes. So Paul said, we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, our Lord. Jesus, the Lord is translated by saying, Lord means master, owner. So if Jesus is your Lord, that means he's your supreme authority in your life. Mm -hmm. And you are his servant. Right, right. Also, Paul writes, if Jesus is our Lord, we are his servant. We are servants of others for Jesus' sake. Right, yeah. ah. True preaching of the gospel represents Jesus. Did I say that again? Yes. True preaching of the gospel is presents Jesus as Lord and Savior. So many hear the gospel only want a Savior. Jesus cannot be your Savior unless you make him your Lord. Yes, yes. See, see, Savior Jesus, Savior Jesus, Savior Jesus, but you don't want to obey Jesus, obey Jesus, obey Jesus, obey Jesus. Right, right. Yeah. Everybody wants to be saved. Nobody wants to go to hell. Right. You, go, you go out there and you ask somebody to sit there where you want to go. They're going to tell you, no, I want to go to heaven. If, even if they don't really believe in heaven or hell. But they're going to tell you, I, I want to go to heaven. Nobody wants to go to heaven. But in order to get, go to heaven, you got to make Jesus your Lord. Yeah. One without the other don't, don't work. He is called Lord in this scripture at least 15 times. For example, in the epistle of Romans through Jude, through Jude, Jesus is referred to as Savior 19 times. He was referred to Lord over 300 times. Huh. If Jesus is truly Lord of our lives, his light will shine in and through us. Paul continues, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light 
of knowledge to the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. God spoke and light came out of darkness. He said, yeah. and the, the Bible says that God created the heaven and earth. And, the light, the, and when he spoke, everything that was dark got light. And, and he didn't have to say, bam, 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 make it light. Make it. He just spoke, let, let there be light. And they'd be like, oh, Jesus is good, isn't he? Yes, he is. Yeah, it just, it, when we have repented and talked to God and just said, Lord, save me, you, you know, one thing he ain't got to, he don't say, well, uh, you used to do this and you used to do that right. and you used to do this. He speaks and you say, when God saves you, when Jesus Christ saves you, you save. Yeah. I don't save you. I don't save you. But Christ saved me. I'm saved through the grace of Jesus Christ, God's Son. And that's what Paul was trying to let them know. He said, I, I'm preaching because I represent a man, Jesus Christ, who's sitting on the right hand of God. He will save you. People don't want to hear that. Because... It, 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 they don't. They want. They want to be righteous, but they don't want to be saved. Because they want to appear righteous. I, I never forget uh, 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 when I lived in the dorms at at, 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 uh, at the college out there, and a young girl came and questioned me, and she said, "She said, are you sanctified?" I said, "Oh yeah." And, and she said, "Well, is so and so and so and so." Are they sanctified? I said, but that's what they tell me. They're sanctified. Now, how come y'all different? I said, what do you mean? She said, well, this person, she does this, 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 this. And, 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 and from my understanding, sanctified folks don't do that. <laughs> oh, save me, Jesus. <laughs> God is good, isn't he? Yes. God, when he saves you, you belong to him. And no matter when, if you, I'll get back there. When you walk out the house, you're supposed to be the same, same person when you walk out the house as you was when you was in the house. Yes. The same one. Yes. So, the spiritual part of, oh, what, Paul, what did Paul say? Uh, 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 I, believe, what, what, I believe that was in, I think I had it. Yeah, I believe that's it. 1 Corinthians, now, I'm almost done now, uh, just because I'm reading the scripture, I'm not going to start all over y'all. Amen. If we, we was with uh, bro, uh, you all know him as Lenny, and back in the day, when we was with Lenny and Grady Simpson and Pastor Simpson, we went down to Pastor, you remember the little church, we used to go down there on 24th Street, and we walked in the door, and when we walked in the door, the preacher saw some new folks come in and he started all over again. <laughs> he started from the, from the beginning, all of it. <laughs> and so we was there, we was there to go play music and talk and do music. And uh, after their service, he saw some new folk coming in the door, he started all over. So, so I got another scripture here. I'm not gonna start all over, I'm just gonna read you that scripture. But Paul said, he said, though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone. Yeah. To win as many as possible. To the Jews I became a Jew. To the Jews, uh, to win the Jews. To those under the law I became one under the law. Though I myself not under the law. So as to win those who are under the law. To those who are having the law I became one not having the law. Though I am not free from God's law. But I am under Christ's law. So as to win those having, not having the law. To weak I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel yes. that I might share yes. in his blessings. Yes. I, 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 yes. I never forget the, the first day I started growing fuzz on my face. <laughs> and I, I caught a lot of flack for the fuzz on my face. But you know, I talked to a whole lot of people back in they had fuzz on their face. They, they, they thought I was one of them. Because <laughs> they had fuzz on my face. And, 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 and sometimes you, you wear, you wear uh, casual clothes when, uh, to, to, to kind of mix in with other folks with ca casual clothes. If I walk into the gym with a suit on, everybody look at me funny. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I had to walk in the gym with a pair of sweats and tennis shoes on. So everybody kind of, well, he's part of us. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you go down on the street, you have to talk to folks, and you just got to put on your old raggedy jeans. Right. Of course, the old raggedy jeans now cost more than the new jeans. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't understand why y'all pay hundred something dollars for a pair of jeans. I go to the flea market, y'all, I'm going to tell you. Thank you, Jesus. But <laughs> when you walk down there, you, you got sometimes look like the environment you're in. It didn't say that you got to be with the environment. It's, you, you got to kind of look. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to y'all, you know. Oh, hallelujah. In other words, you got to adapt to the, to the field. Right. Adapt to the field. You see, see, when I was in the country down there, if you have what kind of field, uh, Mr. Moodspot, I, could, I, could, I don't know what his name, I can remember that name. He, he had a wheat field. And, and, and certain times of the year, you can see just, just that golden gold. You remember off to the right there, to the left of Grandma's house. He had a big wheat field. And, and he dressed one way. And, 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 and Mr. Miller on the backside, he had a chicken farm. And he better be dressed a different way. Because there's a whole lot of kind of, if you slip in there, you're in, you're in trouble. <laughs> and then on the other place, they just had a different kind of farm. But everybody kind of dressed according to their farm. But you know what? They were all farmers. Yeah. They were all people who dealt in the farmland. So, 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 so you may be down in the west side, the east side, the north side. You might be in Japan. You might be in Canada. You may be in Europe. You may be down in Jamaica. You may be in Mexico. But sometimes you just got to look like the folks so the folks will talk to you. Right. Right. And that's what Paul's trying to tell them. You see, I, I look now, and there's some, place, some people I don't want to look like. Yeah. Well, same to Jesus. Yeah. Uh, I, I just want to. I just want. I just want to. Uh, just say, hey, God will bless you and save you. And then let me tell you something. It's no problem just telling somebody that God will save you. Yeah. Preach the gospel. Preach Be in season, Preach out of season. Yeah. Reprove, rebuke with all long suffering. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's it. Yeah. That's, it. That's where it's at. Yeah. Now let me tell you something else. The Bible also lets you know that this way is a way that's not crowded. This way is a way that's a traveler every now and then. You're not going to always see thousands and thousands of people in this way. That's right. You may not see it. But let me tell you something. It don't matter how many people you have. It don't matter where you go. The thing is to live right and talk to people and tell people about Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's what Paul was trying to say. Yeah. We get caught up in the TV. We get taught. Oh, you got folks running around here. I've never seen the day when, a, I guess maybe, maybe I'm just, just young, when there, there are more, more, more preachers got on jet planes. Yeah. Right. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I don't want to be poor. <laughs> but, but Bishop King taught us to live by faith. And I, and I remember how he, how, he prayed over, looked like it, that, that, that lovely oatmeal that passed it on life. But when he ate the spoon of lumpy oatmeal, it, it, it gave energy yeah. for the whole day. Yeah. You know why? Because Bishop prayed over that food. Yeah. You know, sometimes, I, I never forget, he was, he, he was down in the south preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, giving the people what God want, gave him to give. And, and, and you know, they or if you got any money from it, uh, uh, they had to send it over the telegram. And uh, uh, because you put it in the mail, you ain't never get it. But, and then, 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 then the church wasn't, wasn't prolifically financially able back in those days. But, but that little, the money had got there. Mama went in there, went in the kitchen to see what they had. And she found some onions. She found some potatoes. She found a can of pet milk. Remember pet milk, y'all? Right. <laughs> and and she and, and it was always salt and pepper. She, she cut it up, and she first she made she made that broth with the onions and and the milk and the little water. And she did she dropped those potatoes in there. And let me tell you something, Sister Jeanette. 
I could still taste that. Right? The thought of it, I could still taste. But you know why? She prayed over it. Yeah, yeah. She prayed over it. It was she prayed over it, and, 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 and just something. You know, I, I love to cook. God knows I love to cook. <laughs> I have not been able to duplicate that soup to this day. I've tried. I can't do it. <laughs> but, and I prayed over it too. <laughs> but I haven't been able to. That, that, those are, the saints was anointed to make sure that what God said would yeah. come to fruition yeah. in your home and in your life. Yeah. And that's what Paul was trying to say. He said, just live for Jesus. Live right. Live for Jesus. Yeah. Live for Jesus. The seeds of the gospel will grow up. The yeah. 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 Bible gives us a good example. He said, when we preach and when we talk about you, sometimes, sometimes you get the, you, your seeds go out and they fall on some rocks. And they'll fall on some thorns. Yeah. And sometimes the ground is, we used to have what they call hard pan. Yeah. And that's the kind of Dirt, you can, it take God and something else to put the shovel down through it. You got to weigh about three or 400 pounds just to get the shovel to go down that deep. God, it, it was hard, man. But every now and then, every now, the seeds fall on some good ground. Yeah. Good, good ground. And, and when it fell on good ground, and, and, and it may spring up in the other places just a little, because see, see, you give a, you take a, 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 a sweet pea or a, a pimple bean or something like that, and put a little water on it. After a while, you see a little sprout come up. But if it don't have no dirt, and if it don't have no food, and if it don't have no gospel, yeah. if it don't have no salvation yeah. foundation, if it don't have no spiritual foundation, if it's not rooted and grounded in the word of God, yeah. it will die. Yeah. It'll die. So, so, so the Bible lets it, it, sometimes the seed fall on good ground. Yeah. And, 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 and what pastor does, he, he the farmer. See, see, let me tell you something. I, I, I can go off in a different field. All the, the farmer is over his farm. Yeah. The farm don't rule the farmer. It's just, so sometimes the, the, the Mother King used to have me, she said, Calvin? And I'm trying to do whatever Calvin was doing. Come on out here. And she go in the shed and she pull out a hole. She said, there's about six or seven rows there. The weeds are growing up. Yeah. Get those weeds out of that garden. Yeah. And I get the get the hole and start start to work. See, <laughs> Ooh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. She was the pastor of that farm. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes the the, the 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 pastor look out there and say, "There's some weeds over there. Get the hole out and start holding yeah. those weeds. Yeah. Hold those weeds." It's not always easy because down there it would be 105, 110, and you have to get out there in the elements and do what you had to do. Right. So sometimes it looked bad walking down certain streets. It looked bad going to certain places. It looked rough going to certain places. But sometimes all you got to do is say, say let me tell you something. The Bible, the Bible, the people don't obey the Bible. What's the Bible tell you to do? He said, tell them. Yeah. And if they don't receive it, yeah. and keep going. Shake the dust off your feet. Sometimes, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. God didn't tell you to do that. Right. He said, he, he just said, compel them to come. Yeah. Compel them to come. Now, that compel them to come don't mean begging. Right. But hey, you have, the, you have a good enough mind to know that you're doing wrong. So all God would tell you, come on. And get saved. You don't want to get saved. You don't want to come to the Lord. I, is there another soul over there? That's Let me right. tell you something. God is interested in whoever you talk to, wherever you are, whatever the situation is. If they don't accept it, if they don't receive it, you just get going. Yeah. Yeah. And go to the next. Oh, people don't want to do that. I need your offer. I need your money. There used to be a time there's one church in this country that would not accept us as black people. We didn't have a soul. Till y'all start making money. And when y'all start making money, oh, come on in, sing in the choir. Yeah. But, but before you start getting a salary, they wouldn't let you come in the door hardly. Huh. It's not about the money. 
Because it's, it's about Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's because, like, get back, back down to what I said. You may live 100 years. You may live 200 years. But, boy, when you pass away, you got eternity to deal with. And I, for what? Let me tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I do not want to go to hell. I'm adamant about that. I, I, I don't want to go there. I don't want to have nothing to do with it. I don't, we, we have gone to some of the most beautiful beaches in the country, in the world. You know what, when it's hot, I cover up. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking with no hat. Sometimes yeah. I have a towel or umbrella or whatever. Let me I do not want to go to hell. The only way to keep from going to hell is to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and the way he asked me to serve him. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Can you lift your hands and say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Thank God for the word of God. Let the church say amen. 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 Hallelujah. God is a good God. Yes, he is. Serve the Lord. Where is that? Maximize. Put that up there so I can see it again. Amen. Amen. Yes. Getting the maximum yield from your field, wherever God has planted you, there is an increase that will come. Amen? Amen. 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 Look out on the field. The harvest is white. But the labels are few. Amen? Amen. Amen. I, I was just sitting there, the theologian, Calvin, <laughs> I tell you, I have, to, I have to go back and read it again because that's a powerful word that came to them. God wants us to listen to his word and what he is doing and be ready for the harvest. It's coming. Amen? Amen. The harvest is coming. Um, uh, Investment, this word yield stuck into my mind. When we talk about maximizing your yield, that's an investment. You're investing in something. And uh, there is an increase when you invest wisely in a product. There is something that will come back. Uh, I have a little savings account. It's only about $100 in it. But when I got $2 back, I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> and do you not know that the Lord told us to do the same thing and to invest wisely in the kingdom of God? Amen. Invest in his kingdom work. Calvin preached so powerfully, I was at, sit there and I said, Lord, what are you saying? And Jesus said, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and dust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures. Where? In heaven. Amen. And I'm, I, I want to invest in heavenly things. Amen. How about you? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Everybody rest on your feet. Amen. Uh, mm -hmm. I was sinking deep in sin far from the peace for sure, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now say, Am I well love lifted me? Love
Come on, give God praise right now. Every head bowed, every eye closed. And if you heard the word of the Lord today, if, whether you are here or watching this service virtually, if you don't know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins, I'm asking you to come even today and let us pray with you the prayer of faith through repentance so that you might know Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And even those of you who are watching, make that altar right where you are. Amen. God will meet you right at home and change your life. And we ask that you come and become a witness for Jesus Christ. Make an investment, and that is your spiritual life, your life, to Jesus Christ. And let him fill you abundantly with his love and his mercy and bring peace into your life. Now, Father God, in Jesus' name, I ask that you would reach out now and touch and save, God, those who do not know you in the pardon of their sins. Help them to say yes to you in Jesus' name. For your hand is not short that it cannot save, neither is your ear heavy that it cannot hear. And I want you to hear the prayers of those who cry out to you, Lord, save in Jesus' name. Save today in Jesus' name. Bless this church and its ministry and its leaders and those, God, who are planting seed for a great harvest on this corner in Jesus' name. I pray that souls will be drawn yeah, to you yeah. and the kingdom of God will go forth with yeah. power and with authority. Yeah. Witnessing so that lives will be changed and saved in Jesus' name. Thank you for your word. Thank you, God. Thank you for healing. Thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing in Jesus' name. And we praise you for it. Thank God. Amen and amen. Come on, give God praise again.